Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about seven times Magic the Gathering almost died as a game. I've been playing Magic since beta, and that was my first pack. But I do remember some of these times quite fondly, and some of these other times I took a break. Where Magic was not as popular yesterday as it is today. Luckily our game has grown and become more steady and overall it's healthy right now. But there was a time like Fallen Empires where people didn't want to play. Imagine buying a booster pack and then everything in the booster pack was just very very bad. So it wasn't like the Fallen Empire prices were much higher than they are today, they were actually lower. I don't remember Rainbow Veil vale being that pricey. So everything was under a dollar and a pack was still three dollars. The next big disaster was Chronicles. You might ask why do we have the reserve list? The reserve list was 100% due to Chronicles. Chronicles took all these relatively expensive cards and reprinted it and this upset the collector base. The collectors got really upset because these fancy cards that they collected no longer had as much value. Now, what is the difference between Chronicles and let's say Eternal Masters or Modern Masters or Iconic Masters? There was a big difference in the amount, the percentage. So if you take it as a percentage of cards, they overprinted it like crazy. Imagine if Modern Masters was printed as much as a standard set and actually was a standard set. Sounds great, but a lot of people were upset. Now this one I remember very well, and I do own this card. This dragon was given at the 1994 Dragon Con convention, and I made a bet with my friends to see who could get the dragon first. I didn't get the dragon until much later, but the dragon price collapsed. So you literally had to be at Atlanta, the convention, to get it. Now you might ask, wow, I bet you Wizard of the Coast is never going to do that again. Give exclusive cards at a convention. Uh, Hascon? So Hascon has exclusive cards, which are have other Hasbro products in them. So maybe My Little Pony. If they do My Little Pony, I guarantee you that promo will be very expensive eventually, if not initially. But overall, that was an epic disaster that might repeat itself very soon. Next, we had the Alliance. Alliance was a terrible time to play Magic. Um, how can I say this? A lot of people quit during Alliance, and they quit based on these cards. They didn't like the interaction where there was a surprise, right? Hey, you're tapped out. Now's my opportunity. Surprise! <laughs> Got you. People didn't like that. They didn't like uh, the randomness of these cards and the ability to discard a card from your hand and do stuff at instant speed. Force of Will being the most recognizable, I've recounted my story where I've collected these because I thought these were the best cards ever, all five of them. Uh, to a less extent, white one was not as good. I ranked them black, blue, red, green, and white. And I have the most blacks, contagions that you could possibly have. Next, uh, visually, this was a big difference between 7th edition and 8th edition. As you can see, a lot of people like 7th edition better. And the colors were less vivid. So it kind of reminded me of when we went from Unlimited to Revise. Unlimited had very dark, you know, it, they, it just looked better. I'll, I'll just say Unlimited looked better than Revised. And that is what happened here. A lot of people were going to quit over the new frame because they were incredibly upset about it. And I'm not entirely sure if they actually did, but there was a large discussion of why we had to do this. And not much of it was known at the time, but I mean, it's interesting, right? Right? You have the white border ones, which indicate it's a reprint. That's the whole point of having white borders initially, was to tell people it was a reprint. 
And then now you had a new frame. Uh, people were pretty upset uh, throughout the, the history of this set. The, the set has done well, uh, but it took time because when it first came out, a for distant boxes, I got a recent one four years ago for a hundred bucks. And that's pretty crazy given what's in the set today. Uh, you have a $42 card on top and then you have, this was before Mythics obviously. And then you have Blood Moon. The foils are very expensive in this set. So like 7 for Edition, although 8 for Edition took longer to be like that set. This was not widely opened. It was not in great supply. Uh, not Definitely not compared to something like Our Devastation today. And that is why the foils are so pricey. So if you hit it on a foil, you are good to go. Uh, Intruder's Alarm, actually, it's a good card too. It just went up in price. Next, uh, the Planeswalkers. I remember playing during this set. This was not a popular time for Magic. Uh, the Eve Tide. Shadowmoor and Lorwyn. Historically, we look back on it and say, oh yeah, that's a great set. But the reason some of these cards are so expensive is not much of the product is opened, was opened. Magic was in decline at the time and one of the reasons that people pointed to, again, not entirely sure it is correct, was the Planeswalkers. They did not like the concept of Planeswalkers, which we now know is promoted to Oblivion. And the reason they didn't like it was it was a new mechanic. It was it seemed kind of comp complicated and seemed overpowered in some cases. And it was new. People don't like chains. Um, but this turned out to be one of the best changes they made, in my opinion. Uh, the Planeswalkers really add a lot to the flavor of the story. Lorwyn was a very, very... It's a great set. You look at this, you got Vigor, you got the Palace, which is a land. It's the Elf Land, black green. I have lots of those. Because uh, no, no one at the time wanted to trade for them. You have Wild Speaker as the most expensive Planeswalker. You got Godot Teague. Obviously, the very beautiful Dot Seas. This was a interesting set. Uh, very little of it was open. It was not a popular time for Magic. And one of... You know, one of my friends quit during this time and I asked him, you know, why did he quit? And he just said he didn't like it. He was moving on. Uh, he was more, getting more into video games. Um, at that time, video games and was, you know, it just kind of exploded in popularity. It wasn't just for nerdy kids anymore. Everyone played video games and playing a card game was kind of met at the time. All right, more recently, we'll talk about Innistrad. People flipped out about flip cards. They really didn't like chains. Chains was not something they wanted to see. The flip cards, in my opinion, were very smart designed and they made a lot of sense to me. They did a good job. I was one of the detractors, I will fully admit. I didn't feel like having, I, I didn't understand how a flip card would work because like, you know how sleeves, you can kind of see through the sleeves, um, but all the magics have the same back? Uh, I was like, okay, so everyone needs, like, sleeves that no one can see. Like, they have to do go with black sleeves instead of, you know, red ones, light red, pink ones. I was like, wow, this is going to be terrible. But it worked out. I mean, the flip cards made sense. Uh, they were overall well-designed, but a lot of people f were upset and... You might not remember this. They, in particular, they were upset uh, that uh, over the design of it, not over uh, the sleeves, which I was upset about. I personally was upset because I had to buy more sleeves now. But they were upset over how would people draft it, uh, limited, sealed. There was a lot of concerns, right? One of the things about draft is you're not supposed to disclose what you have, and it turned out to be okay. Wizard of the Coast has survived a lot. They are a smart group. I assume that they're a group of people. And they are a smart group. They have done an excellent job. And sometimes I criticize them, but only because I want them to get better. And without criticism, without saying, oh, okay, I think Hour of Devastation needs more powerful cards, then we're never going to get powerful cards because they're just going to dumb down the game. Um, the best way to 
say that you love, love a set is if you think our devastation is incredible, then buy it. It's all about numbers. Uh, if you think our devastation is terrible, don't buy it. I think I personally think it's kind of meh and it's not really for me, but I am very excited for Iconic Masters because uh, I don't know what they're going to reprint in that. Eventually, I assume they they will run out of cards to reprint. Uh, now, there are a few ones that I personally need, like Horizon Canopy being number one. Horizon Canopy, I need lots of them for my different taxes deck. But anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.